Hello, everyone. This is Scott Roberts here at Explore Scientific, and my special guest uh, today is Dr. Fiorella Terenzi. She's an astrophysicist, a professor, author, um, and musician, a uh, recording artist. And so uh, it's, I'm really excited to have her here today. It's, uh, uh, she is uh, someone that's devoted her lifetime towards fusing art and science uh, and um, you know, it's, uh, it's something that has not always been uh, uh, a, a smooth path, but uh, she is breaking ground and she's done so for many years. Uh, there's a, a part here that I'm just gonna take from her, her uh, website about herself. Uh, and it says, uh, perhaps it will take a new scientist, maybe a woman to show how to combine those opposite approaches of gazing at the stars. Of course, some of my colleagues think I'm a bit soft in the head, um, uh, that I have forsaken scientific objectivity uh, in order to feel closer to our subject matter. But these Martians, as I like to call them, do not realize what I'm up to. What I aim for is a dynamic relationship with data, a dance between the knower and the known. Um, Fiorella, if uh, you want to start uh, sharing your screen, uh, you can go ahead. I think I already did. Uh, uh, not yet. Okay, one second. There you are. Ciao. How are you? <laughs> hey, everybody. Good, good. Good to see you. Yeah, great to see you too. Great yes. to see you. Too. Um, uh, Fiorella, I am uh, really honored, very honored to have you on the show today. And, uh, um, and you know, I have been diving through your music videos, uh, your writings, um, and uh, we've known each other for quite a while. But um, I think the last time I saw you in person might have been at the Deep Impact uh, premiere in Hollywood. Uh, you were there with... Uh, uh, all kinds of movie stars <laughs> and uh, uh, it was a very interesting day. And, um, but um, 
and we both had a common friend, which, uh, which was uh, Jack Horkheimer. And, uh, you know, so, uh, and I know that you worked at the uh, Miami Space Transit Planetarium, which was uh, great. Was that your first uh, planetarium uh, job or, or, or did you work at other planetariums before that? No, it was my very first experience at the planetarium. And uh, it was an honor to work with Dr. Jack Orkheimer. You know, yes. keep looking up. He was uh, also another one that was able to combine uh, quite a lot of the different and interesting element uh, for astronomy and public shows. So I learned a lot from uh, Dr. Orkheimer. Right, right. Well, I, I do want to dive a little bit to your beginnings, okay? And uh, I learned that uh, when you were only five years old, that uh, it was your grandmother that introduced you to the stars. What, what, what happened? Uh, usually, you know, I, I was raised in Milan. I grew up in Milan, a big city. During the summertime, I was spending it with my grandmother in the countryside. She didn't know anything about the universe, but, uh, you know, in the evening, at night, we were going for a walk. I still remember the feeling of the wet grass. And it was about looking up to the night sky. She was making fable uh, stories, a great imagination. I remember the sky of the nights coming alive. I felt uh, like I was at the center. I felt everything constellation was rotating around me. And I felt in love. I knew I was not going to be the same ever again. Wow. wow. Yeah, that's, uh, um, it, it, it's, it's, uh, I think a little unusual to have such a profound effect um, uh, suddenly like that, to know that your life was changed at such a young age, you know. Um, but um, your grandmother said for you to listen to the stars, right? Or to listen to the one star. And, um, and you did, and, and uh, you felt that you heard this star. Is that right? Yeah, I felt it for sure. I, I really... I felt uh, a heartbeat, uh, which was mine, and it was a pulsating with uh, a star. Maybe it was a pulsar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for That's sure. So interesting. I felt it. It was uh, like the music of the sphere. It was a sound, an intuition that kept running in my mind until finally I was able to study music, go to the university, study physics, and understand a little bit more of what I was feeling inside. Yes. And you ask the questions, am I part of all of this? You know, can I ever know it? Does it know me? What does it tell me about my life? And can, can it show me how to construct my own internal universe? Fiorella, I think you've done that. I think you really have. Uh, I believe that you have uh, uh, successfully fused art and science. Uh, but I do want to ask you. I mean, you, your, uh, your colleagues. Uh, you said that uh, they make they some of them say you're a little soft in the head. What do you say? I mean, are you are you offended by those those uh, by their uh, posturing? Um, is it uh, you know, and is it difficult uh, being a woman in your field? All right. So um, those are Martian scientists. <laughs> I, those are uh, the god of war. They made war on yeah. men in the science. But yeah. I'm talking about an experience that happened to me long time ago uh, when I was a student, perhaps uh, way back in Italy. Mm -hmm. Women were such a minority that I really felt I was uh, going in a battlefield. Mars was uh, dominating every single data. Oh. They owned the celestial object. They mm. were unwilling to share it. Mm. All those uh, value that uh, the Venus science uh, uh, is not able to do because Venus is a more pro 
sharing it. So these uh, Martian scientists, mm. yes, I was uh, in a war with, uh, but uh, now I grew up, I became strong, and yes. I know that uh, my best shield of defense is my femininity, being sexy, being a woman, and mm -hmm. keep looking up. That's right. Yeah, and I, I know that you don't apologize for for anything because uh, why why should you? You're you know you've done amazing things. Um, you uh, you also make a point of whether uh, whether to admit it or not, modern science has fostered a materialistic world, and I know that that uh, that you uh, understand the interrelationship of uh, all things in the universe, uh, all the way down to maybe the atomic level, but not just in, in an objective way, but kind of in a beautiful poetic way. And, um, uh, you know, that's, um, that's something you don't hear scientists and astrophysicists talk about a lot. Um, you know, maybe, maybe some of them feel it. I, I know you do. Um, but uh, uh, I think that um, many scientists and astrophysicists feel they have to be reserved and not really express any kind of feeling, uh, lest somebody thinks they're not objective. They're not, um, uh, they're not being a, a good scientist, right? <laughs> so well, I th I think why wouldn't they love it, you know? <laughs> well, the idea is that when you look at this galaxy, I mean, how can you call this galaxy PSK 1926 plus MT15? Why, <laughs> why? I mean, look at this beautiful central region. This should be called the explosion of the emotional galaxy. Yes. Why? Because we can, you know, through naming the universe with the poetic, we can relate to this object a little bit better. And we can even remember the chemical, the physical, and the dynamical property. But let me let me let me say that you know, society mm -hmm. gave us raw. So a man is not supposed to wear a lipstick, right? Is not supposed to color the hair. Is not supposed to be emotional. But do you notice that we are moving now in a different type of society? Yes. So even these Martian scientists are becoming different, right? <laughs> they are becoming more interesting. Free yourself. That's my message. But we are all conditioned by society. Somehow, right? And our culture, our heritage also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay. I, I don't okay. hold anything back. Actually, in the environment I am today at Florida International University, I tell you, it's fantastic. All my colleagues, Dr. James Webb, is a musician, play guitar. The other one is doing astrophotography. Is such a creative, really, is a creative, exciting science. And, I mean, and, we are in, you know, in 2020, now things are changing quite a lot. You even see NASA, JPL, doing amazing things with this yes. fantastic universe which yeah. I'm going to put in motion for you, right? From my iPad, right. Right. so you can enjoy this uh, universe unfolding in front of your eyes. So even, uh, even NASA, JPL, they are doing very creative stuff. You know, sound of the universe, mm -hmm. virtual reality. I think it's going to be interdisciplinary, our future. Yes. But you are you are one of the pioneers of of uh, putting um, um, sound waves, getting sound waves from the galaxies, from the stars. Um, can you just talk a little bit about this because it, this is an important part of your music and uh, and what you've contributed uh, to science and to the pedestrian person that uh, because most of us would find the academia and the hardcore science of astronomy out of our reach, right? And so I think that you are making it more accessible. Well, it's our uh, backyard. So yes, the universe, constellation, this is a celestial object that they need to swim in our imagination or uh, they become a bit for our song and our dance. 
But going back to your question, I have to go back to 1987 when I was still a student uh, mm -hmm. working with the music, composition, uh, singing, harmony, piano. And during the day as a physics student in astronomy, astrophysics and radio astronomy. So during radio astronomy, working with the radio wave from space, uh, I realized that they are decoded by the same parameter as a musical note. Uh, like intensity, how loud, how strong is the signal and frequency. Mm -hmm. What's the problem? Frequency from this galaxy are in the billion of Hertz into the gigahertz. So I needed a piece of software that went from the radio telescope, my software, into something that can be heard, right? You, you need to listen to this. Uh, sure billion of hertz into what we detect as a sound 20 up to 20,000 hertz. And so uh, I was uh, honored by the invitation of uh, UCSD, uh, the Computer Audio Research Laboratory, which had C music written by Professor Richard Moore. C music allowed me to turn, to turn into sound radio waves from a galaxy 180 million light years away. So for the first time, you heard the sound that belonged to the Jurassic time on Earth. That's great. And so the beginning. And today, I know, I know that you use these tools, all these tools that you have, all your, all your knowledge, all your heart goes into uh, teaching students um, at uh, Florida International University. Uh, where you are a professor of astronomy and astrophysics, right? Yes. yes. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, actually, my real title is uh, uh, teaching professor because I don't do research anymore. I did the research in acoustic astronomy or okay. in computer music astronomy, but I'm a teaching professor. Okay. Yes, uh, my interest is in uh, developing new modality to really connect with my student. So I like to combine performance art, music, poetry, creative design with traditional science education. Okay, okay. Now you, you gave me some videos uh, that you have produced uh, before and um, do you wanna, you wanna show one at this time? If you're gonna play uh, the introduction to Astronomy 101, uh, which I call it uh, Let's Get Astrophysical. Let's Get Astrophysical is astronomy, okay. but okay. it's a multimedia performance. So my students, uh, they write the show, they perform, they sing, they play the music, and we do it on stage. The demo you have was uh, Let's Get Astrophysical when I was in sabbatical last year at California State University, Channel Island. Okay, yes, and you, it, so you're gonna get a taste. Um, we're not gonna show the whole video, but I will move to different parts of the video so that the viewers get an idea of what it is to take a class from Fiorella Terenzi. So uh, I'm gonna stop sharing your screen right now and I'll jump to this video. So here we go. Let's get astrophysical is a transformative high energy musical, an empowering journey to unite reason and imagination, a unique blend of science and art, knowledge and emotions. Look up, look at the stars. Can you hear them? Now thanks to Perella Terenzi, an astrophysicist and musician, stargazers can now peek through a telescope, glance at the Milky Way and listen to energy. Depth 
galaxies to the beat of galaxies 180 million light years away. Studying a struggle like you've never experienced before. child on the Italian hillside. The child is me. Okay, so that gives you just a little taste of what it's like to experience uh, taking a class from uh, Fiorella Terenzi and uh, really amazing. I, I never had a class like that. <laughs> you need to enroll, Scott. You need to join us a dancing, creating, performing while learning physical and chemical dynamic and the celestial object. Yes, I think you're right. And that you told me before that your students never forget the lessons that they learn uh, taking your classes. Yeah, it is uh, like uh, uh, this, the songs we learned when we were a child, right? We are gonna remember forever. Why? Mm -hmm. Because you learn with your emotion. It's really an emotional learning based on the four E of educate, entertain, enlighten, and empower. Because in the very end, education is the best investment. Yes. You know, Fiorella, one of the things that uh, I know happens uh, to people who stargaze, uh, when, uh, when I'm out with people trying to show them the stars, the constellations, maybe how to use their telescope, I always tell them that they are, uh, they are hardwired to the whole universe, that there's nothing separate, you know, that um, even, uh, you know, even though those, those stars appear to be uh, somehow separated from you, those photons are coming into your eyes. Uh, they are the real photons. You are actually getting contact, okay? And if everything in the universe didn't exist, you couldn't exist, you know? That's, so this, uh, this, this uh, interdependence, this uh, interrelationship that we have uh, is something that a lot of people don't think about. They go to work, they have their problems, they, they focus on, on their immediate world, uh, but they often don't take in the stars and, and peer deeply into space and understand that, they, that we are flying through space, that we are flying through space. And so, um, uh, and I see that when, they, when I keep them out long enough and finally they start to ask me and, and I'm sure you see this with all your students, but they'll ask me a question. They'll say something like, Scott, I, I wanna ask you a, a crazy question or a stupid question. And I know that the real question's coming because at this point, they're really exploring. They, they are really learning, okay? And, um, uh, and then they'll ask something like, uh, do, do you think that there is life elsewhere? Or any of these big questions, you know? And now I know that they're waking up I know they're waking up. And I don't know if I'm correct about this, Fiorella, because you, you have worked on this very deeply. But I feel that that is a, a type of real enlightenment. It's not like something nice to say or something because you see it and you feel it. Am I right? You're absolutely right. And uh, everything uh, I do and uh, hopefully I will continue to do, it's really about enlightenment for this society. It's about uh, forging and helping a new uh, individual with, uh, with, uh, with a mind that is informed and also has a social contest 
So no better place, uh, it's really uh, for us to evolve uh, than the universe, because we share so many quality with the universe, uh, uh, such as, you know, we constantly create, uh, we constantly transform, uh, change is the only constant, uh, right? We are doing three billion things at the same time, so like in the universe, uh, but also there is a, the physical touch, let me call it like that. Uh, what you said, that the photon coming from the universe that is a particle of light that reach your eye, that goes in the back of your brain is absorbed into your body. We are in this universe and we represent all the properties of this universe. We just need to look within to find those laws. Yes. I'm working on this idea, you know, the principle of the universe, and I prepared a mini test for you to take. So I can run by a few ideas about the principle of this universe, law that works universally and that you can't break. Okay. But looking up is a reflection of ourselves, and it is about enlightenment. It's a journey that every single one on this planet is on together. Yes, yes, I believe. I believe that. I believe that. Um, Fiorella, I, I also wanted to ask you too, you've had incredible success as an author, um, as a recording artist, uh, you've worked with some amazing people. Uh, you are an amazing uh, musician yourself. And um, what, uh, how, how did that shape you in your, your uh, early years in, um, in starting your uh, recording uh, career and, uh, um, and also your, your uh, writing career? To me, music was the soundtrack of all my life. I'm still in love with music. Yes, I do music. I will never be able to stop making it. To be able to release my doctoral thesis on Island Record, because Chris Blackwell and Rob Farboni found me by coincidence in a recording studio, filtering my galactic sound, that opportunity to release a music from the galaxy open up a lot of door. Uh, but for me it was about uh, um, learning from every collaborator and I learn fast also, I absorb. I remember meeting Thomas Dolby, meeting Timothy Leary and each of them was also for me an evolution. So it was like, uh, feeling myself uh, as a recording artist, uh, being five years old, uh, looking at these people I admired all my life. Uh, and now sure enough, they were with me sharing their own inner universe. Wow. Yeah, that's so cool. That is so cool. Um, okay, okay. Um, uh, we have, uh, you have more, uh, more videos too. What, what, uh, what would you like to show next? How about if we do a few video clips of the work with Ermene Gildo Zegna, which is a old couture fashion from Italy. So what they wanted to do, they wanted to produce a journey from uh, the edge of the universe straight down to planet Earth. In this journey, we are flying by my radio galaxy and listen to it, the pulsar, um, black hole, and you can listen to it. But what's cool about Emanuel Dozenia is that the model did a catwalk on Temple of Pulsars. Oh, wow. So that was astrophysics and wood couture. Okay. Okay. Let's go and look at that. Okay.
That was uh, really beautiful, really interesting, Fiorella. I'm going to have to watch all of that myself. So um, we have some questions uh, from the audience that is watching. And I wanted to ask you from the audience. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, do you have a few minutes for this? Yes. OK. OK, great. Uh, Stephen Hauser says, hello from Idaho. I've been away for a couple of months. Production values increased substantially. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. I'm working hard here. Um, let's see. Uh, Carlos Hernandez, who's a space artist, uh, says, uh, maybe you know him. He's from Florida. He was a friend of Tippi Dioria and Don Parker. Yeah. So he says he's very proud of Fiorella and her accomplishments in promoting science. She is a very talented, beautiful, and, and, and enthusiastic. I was fortunate to have met her at the Miami uh, Museum and Space Transit Planetarium, along with astronomy popular, popularizer and friend Jack Horkheimer. Yeah, th thanks for checking in, Carlos. It's great. Uh, Aaron Thompson says, I took some friends to view the planets last weekend, and they did not even consider how fast the planets move through the sky. They had to chase them with the telescope. They were surprised. <laughs> it's true. And then Ansel Puri from uh, Los Angeles says, uh, what has been, he has a question, what has been your biggest influence in music? Do you feel a certain existing genre is closer to the sound of the cosmos than others? For example, classical, Beethoven, Mozart, and the likes or have your compositions been mostly what you have experienced directly as sound of the interstellar? That's a good uh, question. Well, well, it's a good question. I loved all the electronic music uh, like Stockhausen and Ligeti, but I also loved the hard rock, uh, uh, power sound. Uh, so it was a little bit a mix of the two, of course, opera, but I think the major influence came from electronic music. Uh, now all my music uh, is derived from the sound of the galaxy uh, that I mentioned to you from 180 million light years away. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a process that you sit at your keyboard, uh, you play this uh, cosmic background noise, whatever you want to call it, for me is music. And I look for tonalities, chords, any musical intuition, little ideas. And on top of that, I write the lyrics, I write the melody. But at the very beginning, I would say electronic music, and I still love it. Yes. And what is your favorite um, musical instrument? Probably my vocal chords. Yes, and, yeah, you, have a, uh, and, you have a beautiful uh, voice, that's for sure. 
That's and perfect. the galaxy, because I remember with my keyboard, I play the galaxy on my keyboard. I have a shoulder pin for, you know, the KX5. So I have all the galaxy sampled and I can make music or I can use the galaxy as a percussion, as a beat. Then I use a pulsar, develop pulsar on top of the galaxy. Then the X-ray black hole from MIT. So it's a music from the heavens. So every time you're touching one of the keys on, on your keyboard, it is something from, I had no idea. Yeah. I, th I thought this was, you were somehow blending in, mixing in, in the studio. I did not know it was already sampled. It's played live. So on every note, uh, I have a Jupiter, I have a Saturn, an X-ray black hole. I have a three pulsar, my radio galaxies, uh, solar sound from Stanford, uh, a supernova, uh, so each keyboard, but uh, that is one program. Then there are six or seven other program that is only my galaxy. And then there is a surprise that is the voice of Dr. Timothy Leary. So sometimes I trigger Leary uh, saying, you know, tune the brain to space brain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you remember the song? I think you like. Yeah, Starlight. I do. I do. Yeah, Starlight. Starlight. Yes. Next Good. time, Scott, I'm going to bring my keyboard and I'm going to uh, jam with the cosmos while these beautiful images are running in the background. It sounds good. That's, that's a deal. I, I would love that. that. We invite also some of your uh, listeners to, to jam with the cosmos, so maybe flute, the guitar, improvise. Yep. I will look for them. I know there's musicians uh, out there. So if you're listening to this right now uh, and you're, you're also a musician, uh, you need to get in touch with me. Uh, you know my email, but I'll say it again. It's s at explorescientific.com. So let me know and we'll put together this uh, show and we will jam virtually online with Fiorella Terenzi. So that'd be so awesome. Five. <laughs> okay. Boom. I look forward. That's going to be cool. Okay. So Fiorella, I mean, you, uh, you didn't set out just to teach physics, uh, you, you set out to change people's lives. And I think that perhaps you changed your life too. And, and so what, what has fundamentally changed inside of you? Uh, and maybe it happened in stages, maybe it's still happening. Um, how would you just, you would tell someone that you're, you're about your life, what, uh, what is inspiring you, what, what uh, you dream about, what uh, maybe what, what uh, you're afraid, you know, about in the universe? I don't know. I don't know. What is, what is, your, what is your heart? <laughs> well, I, I tell you a secret. Every artist, uh, extroverted, uh, also introverted. And, yes. Um, I appear secure, which, which I am, I, because I am passionate and my passion make me feel secure. But mm -hmm. in order for me to become secure is because I'm very insecure. I'm always uh, in doubt. I'm always uh, questioning, is it good enough or what more I can do? So mm -hmm. it's almost uh, creating an opera every single day with myself. And it's important for me to have learned not to be afraid of my mistakes. Before, uh, before I was ashamed. Now um, uh, I embrace my mistakes that they made who I am today. Yes. So it is a lot of uh, um, tuning myself on also people reaction. I hear people talking about my accent, which by the way, I like to call it a heritage, if you allow me. It's a because great accent. when I hear it's it the accent, accent, I feel like, you know, being put down. You never know weird, ugly accent, but heritage, I can teach you how to make the best pasta carbonara, right? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fine. All right. But, but uh, uh, OK, so that that is how, uh, you know, th that says a lot. Um, yeah. How do you think that uh, your influences change the world? I, 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 I don't know. I, I, 
I mean, I, I, I don't want to take the credit, uh, but uh, when... Uh, um, or maybe, maybe that, we can say this, we can ask, what do you think has been your, your the, uh, uh, from your influence, what, what are you, what do you, uh, what are you happy about when someone says, yes, Fiorella, you are, uh, or you've read something perhaps about yourself, or you see it in a student's eyes or something, what is the most, what is most gratifying to you? Probably when they're able to combine reason and imagination. Yeah. When they get that the freedom, that courage, when uh, they tell me, I become a chemist, but I'm also an actor. I am a, a biology, but I'm also a singer or a comedian. That's uh, what uh, probably is the best compliment that they can. Uh, yes, give. because you've successfully let them have uh, inclusiveness in their life and not be afraid of who they are. Exactly. Yeah. So instead, is moving a scientist from 180 to a 360 degree vision and not mm -hmm. being afraid to experiment and to explore. Because I do believe that uh, you discover new things when you put together two things that are maybe opposite or you heard you cannot combine sound with radio astronomy. I think that is where you have a unique original discovery. Yes, I would agree. I would agree. And we, have a, we, have a nice, uh, we have some comments from um, our uh, listeners. I want to add also. Okay. Okay. You say you're not the stereotypical scientist. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Let's break okay. it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, some comments. Um, uh, people are, of course, loving this show, and I think that they are loving you, Fiorella. Uh, uh, well, uh, Dusty Haskins, um, uh, up in, I think he's up in Minnesota or Michigan, Minnesota, I believe. He says, when I'm out observing or imaging, I always like to have my playlist put together, but it's really cool to see how intrinsically tied together the two can really be. This is an excellent presentation, Fiorella and Scott. Great. Thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. I like, I like uh, the playlist uh, as an emotional journey to connect the dot uh, and then come home. Yes, yes. So we have um, we have another couple of videos here. Which one would you like to uh, show next? Can we do Quantum Mechanic with Thomas Dolby? Sure, sure. With Thomas Dolby. Now before before we show this, uh, can you tell us a little bit of the Backstory: uh, You met Thomas Dolby. In San uh, how how did you uh, how did you have this meeting with him? Uh, he was in San Francisco. Was uh, performing for uh, the Digital Be In uh, by Michael Grosny, and um, I was talking to people. And uh, this gentleman, you know, talked to me and said, "You know, do you know she blinds me with science?" And I said, "Yes, of course, it's Thomas Dolby." And he said, "It's me." And I was <laughs> like, "Oh my god." You know, I cannot believe that I've been listening yeah. to Thomas Dolby when I was in Italy as a student. That was yes. fantastic. And so yes. we started to talk about uh, physics, astronomy, quantum physics, quantum mechanic. And I was talking about uh, my mechanic, right? Yeah, the yeah, yeah. My car on the freeway. The free la freeway lanes are the orbit of the atoms. So we did a take on quantum mechanics. As a mechanic to come and fix my Honda on the freeway because the Honda is erratic. Awesome. Okay. All right. So we will show quantum mechanic next here.
Wow. <laughs> I couldn't stop that video. <laughs> I couldn't stop that video. That was an amazing video. Now, this was made um, uh, in the 90s, I believe. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. It was part of the yeah. Gate to the Mind's Eyes. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Amazing. So, you know, to think of all the technology that had to come together to make the video, uh, but uh, the talent and uh, and I guess all the keyboard sounds are from the stars, right? Very little, actually. That's electronic. It just gives a okay. bigger synthesizer. Okay. Some galaxy as an undertone. I see. I see. Excellent. Excellent. Um, uh, I uh, also wanted to talk to you about a, another artist. Uh, you mentioned Timothy Leary. Okay. 
very controversial uh, uh, type of guy. Um, you know, I remember him from the 60s and 70s. And of course, all the way up until the 90s, I guess he passed away maybe in 95. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Uh huh. And um, uh, the um, what was it like to work with Timothy Leary? Uh, that was a, a really mind opening experience, uh, almost a life uh, three dimensional with the fourth and fifth dimension he had it on top. Uh, uh, it was a very, very, very stimulating. Um, again, um, he had uh, this idea that uh, our brain is a tangle web and the tangle web is representing the universe. And sure enough, when I run a couple of numbers, 400 billion galaxies, 400 billion neurons. So we found all these coincidence of the universe outside and the universe within. And we decided actually to record our conversation. After that, uh, this recording, when I went home and I kept listening, I got out uh, the lyrics for a song and sure enough it's starlight. Or at the very beginning, we call it a one brain. One brain, yes. I and I think you can still find this uh, recording on um, uh, iTunes uh, right now. Yeah. So uh, right, okay. yeah. right, right. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, and um, you have worked with so many artists, so many um, uh, Gregory dancer Gregory Hines. Uh, 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 composers, um, uh, you know, some controversial figures, some, some uh, iconic um, uh, people in, in the arts. Uh, who are you most influenced by as an artist? Um, oh my God, I don't have, a, I honestly don't have a one particular artist. Um, it is a, a random, um, constellation of, of artists uh, mm -hmm. but uh, and i want to mention another artist i worked with uh, which was extremely in influential on me because of microtonality you see i was afraid of microtonality because of you know opera giuseppe verdi puccini is all perfect you know, in pitch, and I never considered the, the microtonality of uh, Indian or Arab music. And so when I met Ornette Coleman, mm -hmm. jazz genius, uh, we experimented by microtonality of the galaxy. So no more of what I was doing, sitting at the keyboard, the B flat, D minor, was all about exploring the microtonality, which was again another panorama unleashed in front of me on which uh, uh, Ornette was uh, playing. And he liked it so much that we had uh, a full session with the several musicians, several instruments, which we performed live at um, a jazz festival in Italy, in Perugia, Perugia Jazz Festival. Fiorella, for those of us who are not musicians, what is, what is, how would you describe microtonality? Microtonality is like, you know, between the musical note uh, A, B, or Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si, okay. Do. I learned that it's like fractions of a note. <laughs> exactly. I always learn it. So between a Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si, Do, you have uh, all different, you know, like a glissato, like a crescendo. So it's going to take all the different, uh, um, intonation that are not the one anchored on our musical notes. I see. So the microtonality in between the music universe that is not tonal. I see, I see. Very interesting, very interesting. And what else should we talk about? We, you know, we're getting, I guess, towards the end. Um, I have the uh, text that I prepared for you. Are you ready? Test for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a test also for your listener. Maybe they can give okay. me some All right. Okay. Facts. All so right. Let's yes, see what I do. Write on or forget it, a crazy idea, and so on. So let me get on my iPad and I'm going to go and explain everything. All right. So, how about this one? Uh, 
the universe is organized in a way that optimizes the chance of good coincidence occurring. True, false, and what could be an example? That the universe maximizes so that we have a greater coincidence. Oh, I, I would say true, okay? Uh, just by the very fact that we have consciousness and the ability to explore the universe that we're in. True, okay. How about uh, the maximization of the coincidence of this solar system? Or even going back to hydrogen atoms in the universe, finding a way to come together to create yeah. a gla gas cloud, a gas cloud from which uh, an early star, a protostars. Yes. You think it could be that? So there is a, a, yes. a force, uh, something that maximizes good coincidence. Yes. Yes, I, I do believe this. I, I think that um, I think this is the source of um, when people think along these lines, it becomes a source also of the great religions of the world. Uh, but it is also it is also something when you look at uh, the interrelationship of all things. And, and just looking back at your own life, and uh, you know, of course, uh, we could just look at our parents and their DNA. And uh, of course they had parents and they had parents and they had parents and there's always something before. And if we keep going, okay, uh, there had to be very favorable, very favorable uh, uh, happenings to create life. So what is the principle that the coincidence happened, things happen is actually an uh, it optimized quite a lot because you know imagine the creation you know being galaxy being yes. formed right away so there is a something there which there is something there i think it's the big question of uh of uh, uh, of astronomers and cosmology you know uh sure. was it done on purpose was it accident is it random is it not random you know these are these are the big questions mm -hmm about this one you're constantly creating yourself like the universe yes yeah yes of course right you know you are you're not only creating yourself but uh your emotions your uh all the cells that are living and dying in your body every second okay all all the interaction that's going on there's really no separation from your skin to, you know, the furthest uh, quasars and the most distant uh, uh, parts of our universe. So if you want to think that you have a skin, it is, it is the entire universe. So, you know, uh, I think a, um, I think that a, an illusion that people have is that they solidify and think they are somehow separate from all of this. I think that's what makes them lonely, you know? Um, oh, so below. Mm -hmm. All right, what about this one? Then? Let's see. Everywhere I look, I see pattern in diversity. And that is the fabric of the universe, of course, yes. supernova, high mass, low mass star, a neutron star. Don't you see the universe? It appears to me it celebrates diversity. Any yeah. thoughts I want to hear also from your listener, if, if, a, if a thumbs up or thumbs down? Hmm. Well, let's see. Let's see if I can... Everywhere my I listeners are thinking here. Um, I don't see anything yet. Okay. I, I don't see anything yet from our listeners. They will probably have to think about this. Um, Dusty Haskins says, I mean that the repeating pattern is everywhere from the nautilus shell right down to the birth of a plant. Yes. Yes. Okay. So these are questions that, um, uh, you know, are coming from an enlightened person, I believe. <laughs> but uh, yes. I love to hear really um, how about. Uh, I'm for emotional engagement in the science. 
Thumbs up. Absolutely. 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 <laughs> Can we say in a life or two? Right? And yes. everything we do in our everything world. We do. Everything we've been, everything we will be. It's going on and on, and it's always been. Yes. Yeah, very good. Stay tuned too. Now, <laughs> now on, I can one. speak only for myself uh, that I am on a journey to uncover my galactic heart. Are you Scott? Yes, of course, of course. Yes, I, I wrapped my whole life around um, uh, astronomy and the stars and telescopes and I love it. I do. Right. I do. And everybody that knows me knows that. Right. Mm. And if you think about our own Milky Way galaxy, you know, the most important part, you know, the galactic center, the galactic heart is yeah. covered up by thick dust cloud. So while I was looking at uh, this uh, galactic center, which was uh, hidden from view, I said to myself, I needed to uncover the dust of my heart, you know, try to become more my own person, embrace my fear. So yeah. I started a journey thanks to the Milky Way galaxy. Did That's right. Yeah, yeah, of course, you know, and you would think that uh, um, more scientists would talk along these terms because they are trying to uncover these secrets. They're trying to unlock the secrets of the universe, but you know, they have, they have their own mysteries inside of themselves too. And, and, and maybe many people keep them hidden their whole lives, which yeah. is a shame. All right. Now, how about the supernova yourself? Bright enough to outshine every other star in I don't know, Fiorella. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this is a little bit of metaphorical for us. Uh, maybe, maybe my star just twinkles a little bit, but it, it does twinkle. <laughs> so. oh, no. You, you are a supernova. I mean, every day you supernova yourself because I remember also your evolution. I met you 20 plus years ago. You know, I still remember when we had lunch. I think it was a junior on Ventura. Do you remember? Mm. I still remember. And you show me a picture of a young boy next to a telescope. Oh, <laughs> but I, I do this kind of thing a lot. <laughs> Well, you forgot I didn't, though. I do remember when, in any case, yeah, this is Supernova. Thank you. Thank you for remembering that. Uh, so Supernova yourself. That's uh, an idea I had, uh, like, um, we should really um, rejuvenate, renovate our energy, uh, try something different, uh, read something you didn't consider reading before, or listen to some music, even to do a workout uh, different yeah. from the one you're doing so you can supernova yourself and you never know, maybe you are gonna outshine. All right, All right. how about, uh, it's a hard one, right? Okay, the universe is comfortable in uncertainty. Are you? Oh, this is something that all of us work on, right? <laughs> we all work on this. We all have our insecurities. We have uh, our doubts, maybe regrets. But really, all we have is what is in the present and our ability to, to love and to do the right thing. It's true. The present. We, we can make these decisions. We can imagine the future and we can maybe somehow remember the past, but it's what we have right here. Right and here. You, and you can make the change like that right now. Right now, together with the, the listener and viewer, this is a precious moment. It's not going to repeat itself. Mm. Yes, that's right. All right, we are almost done. Uh, this is a kind of an elaboration, but uh, <laughs> you can read it for me. Yes. You can read it for me, right? Like stars, yeah. dare to produce your own inner light. Yeah. Yes. You? Yes. Oh, everybody has their own inner light. They have it already. It's there. It's yeah. there. It's re I think it's maybe uh, not afraid to reveal it. So 
That's why I'm not afraid to read the letter. Yeah. All right. And uh, this is a general um, consideration. Okay. Because Radiation, of waves from our universe illuminate me, starlight. Yes. Mm. I like this class a lot. <laughs> get an A plus, one more, one more question. And I was then, not an A student, Viarella. So. <laughs> and then this one, uh, it's uh, let's get astrophysical, which means also let's have some fun, some comedy, some humor with this universe. Yes. And again, it's about the reason and imagination. Yes, this is wonderful. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs up. <laughs> All right, you got it. A plus. A plus. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask you for a report card so I can show my friends. <laughs> Finally, I got the A plus. <laughs> oh, wow. What a day. <laughs> Wonderful. This has been an amazing, uh, really transformative uh, uh, talk, Fiorella. I am so happy that we've been able to do this together. You gave us a lot of your time. I really, really appreciate it. I know our listeners do. And um, is there anything, uh, is there anything else that you want to uh, say or cover? Or? Just saying thanks to you uh, for giving me the time to show all this uh, crazy idea. And thanks for listening. Wonderful, oh, <laughs> and, uh, wonderful ideas. Wonderful. Stay tuned because I always remain stellarly and galactically yours. Oh, so okay. reach out to me for any question. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fiorella. And we Thank will you. come back to you uh, with some musicians and we will jam live. <laughs> so thank you very much. I want to thank all of our audience for watching and um, uh, keep looking up as uh, Jack Horkheimer would say. And uh, I always say that every show, but it is from him. And uh, take care. Thank you, Fiorella. Good Ciao. night. Yeah, Bye -bye. good day. <laughs> bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.